I invite Mr. Youssef Al Bakwi, the CEO of Ship Technologies. Ship Technology is the official representative of the Open Group in Middle East. Youssef leads the team of consultants delivering exceptional value to their clients throughout their digital transformation journeys. Youssef's career spans more than 16 years. To well of which global management consultancies as consulting director for PwC and technology advisor director for KPN. Yusuf, over to you. Sir, over to you. Uh, it's such an honor to be here. It's a fantastic venue, excellent uh, preparation so far, and amazing content. I think we're, we can relate to a lot of the content that we, you know, we presented that was presented earlier today. Um, <coughs> just a dull venue. Fantastic venue. Um, one of the, when you know, James and I were having a chat uh, about this event, I understand we have good representation from the East, I figured it's um, going to take a short amount of time, I'm going to have to spend 45 minutes to keep this quick, uh, but we thought it's very important to bring some you know, perspective about what's happening in the Middle East in terms of the price architecture, what is it, you know, especially when, you know, the current uh, situation, the current climate, overall climate that we are seeing. So um, just uh, very briefly, see, just uh, very briefly talk about you know, Shift Technologies. Shift Technologies is a consulting firm where we started the value of great across the Middle East, the GCC specifically. Um, we uh, we're a small firm, we're a niche player. We uh, focus specifically on enterprise architecture and digital transformation. It's enabled by an our um, enterprise architecture. And I'll talk about that specifically in a little bit. Uh, we are the representative of the Open Group, so uh, you know we, we've had a, an excellent relationship. It's been more than five, six years now, um, and uh, we're you know we, we try to stay as close as possible to listen to what's happening around us um, and uh, contribute as much as we can to, that, to the Open Group and to enterprise architecture in general. We were also one of the early adopters of uh, IT for IT. I'll talk about some of the stuff that we're doing with that. Um, in the Middle East specifically and give that context in the, in the bigger picture. So, so over the years, what's been happening? So, you know, Shift Technology, we've done over 150 enterprise architecture projects um, across the East. So, this could be establishing an EA function uh, or actually working with architecture and designing architectures for our clients um, or operating enterprise architecture. Offices for our clients. So we have a tremendous amount of experience. We have a lot of information and we have a wealth of um, depth and wealth of enterprise architectures capabilities. And that also that gives us, you know, the provides us with that exposure that we need to have an overview of what's happening in the markets around us. Um, we've also done, I guess, so we talk about as you know, close to our heart, we've uh, trained or and more certified over 2000. Uh, uh, to ask for my questions in the which is a, a healthy contribution, in my opinion, from coming from our region. And we hope that this continues to grow more and more. Uh, one of the things that we're ju we just about to launch is uh, to, that we're actually going to go in Arabic to the Middle East, so this is going to also uh, work with new, new capabilities and new coming into the Togaf work. And we, so far, we have done two uh, IT for IT implementations, which is, uh, again, this is very good. For, um, on, you know, especially that we're you know, operating in, a, uh, in our markets where you know, adoptions can sometimes be different. But I think it's very important to, uh, to all of, and I'll explain a little bit um, how we manage to convince the client that IT for IT is the right framework for them to adopt given the challenges that they are facing today. So there's a lot of challenges that we are facing. So uh, you know, we've done a lot of projects. We've seen a lot of successes, but we've also seen how EA sometimes doesn't work the right way. So I'm going to, uh, although I have given, of course, you know, I'm very proud of uh, you know our colleagues from the East who have done very well in EA, but at the same time, I want to focus my, you know, a little bit about what are the challenges that we are seeing, what are the difficulties that we are facing in terms of EA, and how we are trying to address those with our clients. So the first thing is, and this is something that we've seen a lot, and this is the mentality there, which is um, boiling the ocean approach when it comes to it. Let's do everything, start big projects, uh, document everything, detail to the end of the day, and try to do it all in one go and very, very quickly. Now, this is 
this is causing a lot of challenges because um, enterprise architecture is not a snapshot. Well, I mean, the deliverable could be a snapshot at a time, but it should not be a snapshot at a time. It should be a live function. It should be a, a, you know, a living and breathing uh, capability within the organization rather than taking a view about how we look like six months ago or eight months ago. And the longer it takes to actually deliver the results, the less results you see. And this is, this is the reality. So, at the same token, there's a big investment that happens. If we try to do everything in one go and we try to afford the option, we're going to have to spend a lot of money doing it. We're going to have to spend to put a lot of resources. And what this is, what, you know, at the uh, you know, senior executive level, this is creating a perception that my return is going to come in very, very quickly once I'm done. But the reality is, there's a, I don't want to say latency, but the value that the enterprise architecture delivers to an organization is with the implement with the, the utilization of the project, which is not from the implementation of the project. So, oh, we, I, very interesting. We were just having a conversation uh, just after lunch with one of my uh, one of the, the friend, and who owns EA? You know, where does EA sit in the organization? Is this an IT function? Is this a quality function? Is it a strategy function? Is it a risk function? Um, uh, the answer is yes to all of them. And uh, you know, and obviously the answer is it depends. It depends how you see it, how you see it, how you deal with it, and what is the value that you expect to generate from it. And obviously, what this means is that if there's confusion, it means that that understanding and that uh, perception of value is also still missing, unfortunately, in some cases. Um, and we, you know, we are. In the Middle East, I'm going to say this, we are consumer driven. Uh, we are techies and we really like to buy things. Um, so there's a lot of EA initiatives that are tool driven. So they buy software and this and that, so it's going to solve a lot of our problems. And you know, the, the perception eventually is that the, you know, the, at, at senior people, at senior level uh, execs, is that EA is a silver bullet. I'm just going to initiate this project, sponsor it, pay for it, and suddenly, and it's going to solve all my problems. But we all know that's not really how that's happening. Now, given what, what's happening around us, and this is very important to put that in context, uh, today there is you know, this heavy pressure, <coughs> financial pressure. There's oil prices dropping, and the Middle East is heavy um, folks who are going to be out from the images are oil driven revenues for governments. There's also a geopolitical unrest, you know, we see it all around us, and we are affected by the Middle East for sure. And what this is doing to, 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 the, to the sentiment of the consumer, of the buyers, and of the organizations in general, is that there's that financial pressure is saying, you know what, if there is, you know, if, I'm, if there are initiatives that are competing for my dollar spent, where would I put my money? Do I put my money in matters of good order, like enterprise architecture, and this is how it's seen, um, or do I put my money somewhere that's going to Increase my, uh, you know, increase my top line? Is it going to give me uh, better, more customer acquisition? Is it going to generate uh, more revenue for me? And the answer is, you know, I'm under that pressure. My first priority is my top line. And my good order, you know, top data. And so we are, putting, we are seeing a situation where we are um, rethinking quite architecture. So we are rethinking about how do we address the challenges that we use. That the, the, the we are solving, um, and how do we how do we reframe the question itself is of why do we want to do this? So we are we, we we're getting we're making good strands in, in that front. So I'll walk you through that. So there is um, you know there is a light at the end of the tunnel. You know, so the sun is shining, right um, and I would say the conversations that I'm having with my clients and we are having um, are changing for sure. We are seeing this, and it is. Definitely affecting the way we are interacting with them, how they are, how our clients are actually actually seeing things. So digital is seen as the future, and I mean, that's given. I think um, the majority of the representations this morning, and uh, everywhere you look and any uh, search that you do, and any conferences, digital, 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 digital. So how do we do digital, and how do we marry the two, and how do we marry the conversation? I think it's more important than just you know, the execution. So, the 
first thing that we are doing, like right we are having a conversation is we need to be focused on outcome driven So focus on what is the business result and what is the business value that I'm trying to address and trying to achieve using enterprise marketing. So rather than going in and mapping everything in my organization, what I need to be doing is taking a focused view. What is it that I'm trying to achieve as a business? What change do I need to implement? What transformation elements of an aspect am I trying to address? And focus on the enterprise architecture components around that function first and do that. So we grow enterprise architecture by step step rather than the big package approach. Digital is happening. So there's new technologies are available and there's proliferation of new technologies. We're seeing it everywhere. Cloud is uh, cloud adoption is, is massive. And so even in the Middle East, we're seeing IoT thinking, we're seeing artificial intelligence uh, thinking in the Middle East. Um, new business channels altogether that's are being um, opened up uh, because of the new technologies. And obviously, people are thinking about the new business models. It's no longer I do my business this way and everybody must come to me. It's now about how do I collaborate, how do I partner, how do I generate more business value out of the ecosystem that's around me. And we have to define that value. So it's no longer say, well, what is that, you know, what's my return investment on EA? Uh, I think that, that question needs to be changed. It's what is the value that I'm going to generate when I have my EA in place what, as I start my transformation. So the conversation is, is no longer about the value of EA in itself. The value is what does EA do for me in order to generate business value throughout my other initiatives. And um, obviously today we have to think about both sides of the coin. You know, there's the performance, which is the first work that you allows us to do. But we also have to think about, about risk. And we have to see how risk affects us as an organization. And this is becoming more and more, and more, and more important for that executive level. Because organizations are looking and saying, we don't want to fall into the same trap again. He is supposed to have to avoid uh, overspending or extending myself. So how do we address that and how do we manage this with the process? And there is no silver bullet. I mean, that's, uh, we're very clear when we're having a conversation that the, the value of enterprise architecture is not in itself and by its value of enterprise architecture is in the capability that it allows you to generate and, and allows you to innovate uh, throughout your other transformation plans. So why digital? I mean, that's also a very important Question. We have to ask ourselves why are our clients in the, given the, in the face of all the challenges and all the economic and political situations that we're in? Well, why are they moving to digital? You know, it's, what is happening there? There it is, new business models are emerging. Because everybody's talking about it and everybody wants to do it. The buzzwords are big in the movies. Uh, uh, you know, people are, you know, unfortunately and or, or fortunately, organizations do feel that. Uh, you know, they hear a couple of good words and they want to, to, to you know, so it's the need to impact it. But there's also capabilities that are now available. So when we're talking about new business model, uh, models uh, that are being implemented, we are seeing collaborations, business to business partnerships that never existed before and could not have existed before had it not been for technology. So people are thinking. One of the things that I didn't mention before, in, uh, shift technologies is part of a larger conglomerate. Um, our biggest uh, you know, sister company is an automotive uh, business. And we are definitely seeing the impact of, uh, of digital affecting us in the auto business. Whether it's Uber or the next car, the connected car, these are realities that are actually coming to our, to, you know, coming knocking on our, our doors. And we have to adopt and we have to adapt. Uh, the customer dynamic is also changing. So my client's customers, are also changing. They're demanding more. They're more aware. They do their research better. They, they do their research faster. And they make their decisions before they actually come and talk to them. So what is happening is people are getting smarter. And they're because, of, because they are connected better and because their information is uh, better available. So, and what is this doing at the same time? Because there's all that reaction and all that, uh, you know, uh, IT is trying to keep up, keep up, keep up. Uh, buy new things, buy new software, buy new tools, integrate IoTs, all of that stuff. So what's happening is that my IT landscape is also becoming more and more 
complexity. So that's, these are the factors that are pushing the market. But at the same time, there are other points. So the customer is demanding. The customer wants it better. The customer wants it faster. And if you don't give me what I need, I'm going to go to the next available guy. The customer loyalty is becoming very short-tempered. And it's uh, its own operational feed. The smallest aggravation from a good organization, the customer is, is moving. And obviously budget. Uh, everybody's feeling the crunch. Um, so everybody's competing for that dollar spend. And that is the reality. So nobody wants to be that guy. No, no, nobody wants to be sitting there saying, hey, we're on social media. Uh, uh, we're, uh, we're compliant. Nobody cares about that. Today, the, the average consumer is out there saying, I want value and I want it now. And I want, I want it the way I want to consume, not the way you want to consume. So these are really how all of these factors are affecting these conversations. The market is changing. The customer is demanding becoming more and more aware. So what are we doing with our clients? So we said the conversations are changing and I just wanted to highlight very quickly about some of the stuff that we are seeing clients actually doing or helping our, you know, our, uh, you know, our other organizations across the Middle East deliver on those elements so that they can actually you know, adopt enterprise architecture in the right way in the digital industry. So the one thing that I'm seeing and it's proving very, very effective is um, its customer journey maps. What clients are doing, I think my, my colleagues from Oracle just now to talk about customer journeys and mapping customer journeys. I think it's essential for us to understand that customer journey maps is an integral function of an EA growing organization. Because this is how I bring it all together. How, this is how I bring my process, my technology, my channels, and my customer into the picture, which is always an important, the most important element to it. I'm not telling why EA traditionally has been looking inwards, say, this is what I have, this is what I do, this is how I do it. Um, when I start plugging into a customer journey, I'm saying, well, this is how my customer sees me, and this is what my customer expects from me. And these are, again, two sides of the same, of the, of the same point. The customer sees, interacts with me the way the customer wants to do. So when I'm plugging in enterprise architecture, when I'm implementing my enterprise architecture initiatives, it is very important that I don't stop at my, at my organization. I have to be inclusive with my customer. I have to understand what is my customer expecting from me so that I can implement as well. So this is becoming a very effective tool. There's a lot of design, there's a lot of planning that is happening. Uh, cost and benefit and return on investment calculations are happening. The difference is where the difference is that we're seeing this happening at micro level rather than macro level. Rather than seeing organi organizations, like our clients are not coming to us saying, well, how do I get return on investment in the EA? But my clients are coming to me saying, well, what is the return on investment if I actually implement this little you know, capability in my mobile app? Or if I integrate that business to business capability, or I call that, you know, that API from, from my business model. So that conversation is changing on how do I measure my return investment and how do I plan? And the planning is more and more agile as it comes to be. So one of the things that we also really, I, I also believe that um, the, the gentleman before me just presented is also how quickly do I uh, change at the customer engagement level, the system of engagement. Sorry. So we are, we cannot change everything. We don't want to worry about it, but my customers need to be faster, my customers expect me to be more agile. And they want it now, they want the coolest thing every day. So agility is absolutely essential. And understanding what that agility means, and understanding what value that agility brings, is also a function of enterprise architecture. So one of the things that we are doing um, quite a bit of, is we are delivering what we call an MVP, or minimum viable product. So within days rather than weeks, we can actually deliver the capability that the client is expecting in terms of digital transformation. Now, that is not possible to do unless I have a robust enterprise architecture capability, obviously, because I need to understand what is it that I'm delivering in terms of digital transformation, in terms of what is the customer experience that they need to go through. I need to understand what I'm going to find that information. If 
I'm going to leave this to my hands to deal with my back office systems and to find out exactly what private service they are, whether they're the microservices, whether they're the APIs, it doesn't matter. What matters is I need to understand very quickly and very rapidly how do I deliver that value from inside and out and how do I consume it from the outside. So we're going to be now, for example, using some tools that are two of those are available for us, you know, for example, local platforms, um, you know, API platforms, etc. We're able to deliver within days, you know, working fully functioning capabilities. So this is just an example of a mobile app that uses fish recognition. It has a you know IoT sensors plugged into you know somebody's kitchen and to determine if a child is opening the fridge after a certain hour so that it sends a you know, SMS message to their parents saying your kids eating chocolates at 10 o'clock at night. So that kind of capability is uh, you know, delivering that kind of app uh, in about 24 hours uh, is, is massive uh, eye-opener for the C-level executive to say, well, you know what, I can do this. Is it I am now able to think how do I serve to my customers better? And how do I actually reach to my, you know, enhance my top line and how do I increase my customer position? And at the end of the day, we have to make it all work. Right? So it's not enough to say we have technical capabilities. It's not enough to say we have enterprise architecture. Um, we can't apply yesterday's uh, solutions to today's problems. We have to be thinking agile. And this is where IT for our team is coming in. In a tremendous way, the conversations you are having are absolutely incredible because of our clients are saying, well, how do I handle agile? How do I handle DevOps? How do I handle my entire supply chain? Of technology out and you know the tools that we used to have and the, the processes that we used to follow do not do not match up. I was with a client uh, just last week and uh, we're, we're talking about you know systems of engagement, agility and how do we deliver fast and we said you know what let's build an app for you and we built something very similar to, to, to the screenshot I just gave and we built it within about you know half an hour and the client which said is like alright this is fantastic he looks at the CIO and he's like, well, do I still need to go through all your process of quality checks and approvals and all of this? And the CIO is like, yeah, of course you do. It's like, okay, so what's the point? I'm still going to spend two weeks getting what I've done in half an hour. It's still going to take me two weeks to go live. So it is not enough to actually just implement EA. It's not enough to think digital if you don't think about how do you manage digital in that kind of innovation. And I, I, I truly believe that uh, IT for IT is opening that door for uh, opening the eyes of our clients to say, well, this is fantastic, this is how we need to do this, and this is how we can actually handle the agility of that is required from us today in order to implement the API. And uh, that's it. Thank you very much, everybody. And uh, if you have any questions, I'll